What's up, Tucson, in this box? Let's get it out of here so we can check it in, and then we can check it out, see what we think. Okay. So, this has been kind of a hot ticket through, uh, what, the month of uh, August, I guess? And uh, I, like many others, work to get my hands on one of these. And so, yeah, it's a little oily, it's got a funky thumb stud that I can't make function. Okay, check it out, man. Wow. This is the TS-139 in S90V. Titanium and carbon fiber inserts. What's up? Pretty cool. Nice little executive dagger, I don't know. Traditional kind of pocket knife, I guess. Let's get rid of our friend here. Uh, let's clean up some of this oily mess. Oh, I love that S90V, man. It's the steel looks like an old craftsman ratchet steel. It's got that old tool steel look to it. And I just, man, I dig it. This thing looks so good. I'm going to try to represent it in the camera here. I mean, stunning. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Okay. Well, let's check that action. It's not drop shutty, but... I wonder if I was locking myself out there earlier. Uh, no, that's, that's a toughie. Let's go back here. Opens pretty good there. Maybe a spidey flick on that thing? I mean, wow. I do like that blade shape. I mean, what do, what do you call that? A sheep's foot? Modified sheep foot? Hmm. The jimping is on the face, not on the top of that. And so, I guess you'd dig in and get after it. But, I mean, I'm... I'm kind of failing it about half of the time. Nice little bunch of jimping here on the bottom. That's sharp. And that's definitely going to lend to get a grip. And then there's jimping on the top too to grip there too. So the, it does provide a fairly, I don't know, maybe confident grip. But look at all the oily coming out of these scales. I mean, that's why, that's why, unfortunately, a lot of times, these these knives got to be disassembled and cleaned up, man. Who wants all that oil in their hand? Not me. All right, well, let's do that, because I'm failing opening this knife anyways. Looks like it's got some Loctite on the screw. That's nice. It's not an integral, but, I mean, I really liked it the way that they brought those two together. I mean, I always think that that's a good deal when they machine it so well that they can just bring those two scales together like that. Yeah, lots of oil, and it's everywhere. And it's got this full backspacer, so you don't have contact with the blade. Or actually, okay, that's milled into both sides. And then they've got this, this funky <laughs> milling here 
to create a place for a lanyard. Literally, when those two sides come together, you got a little loop that you can put your lanyard through. Pretty, pretty cool, man. I wonder if this is an old design. I mean, it's got an old number, but but y'all know that don't mean nothing because they could bring a model out today for the very first time and make it model two, you know? Yeah, so it's like a half of an integral is what they got going here. It's pretty neat. Oh, yeah, I got a little ahead of myself. These scales got to come off, man. There is a ton of oil underneath them. I hope they'll they'll want to come off. I can already see that this one's not going to be easy. Because you can't really pry, man. Because you go prying on it and you'll crack it. Like, they're not friendly like that. Yeah, Whew. I don't think it's going to cooperate. Let's see, I might get lucky here. So you got to be careful because you're pushing up in this spot and it's already thin. And so it'd be easy to bust that for sure. I'm trying to see if I can get oil to come out of there. Man. And I'm sure it'll come right out of there. And the only thing holding it in there is oil. There's a oil slick under there. And that's what's holding that scale down. It's like, creates like a little vacuum. Presses down on it. But it is machined well. I mean, all of these edges are really tight against there. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get that one off. Uh, this one, I should be able to get under it here. I'm going to use this. Well, there it is. I mean, it's fairly substantial. I don't think I need to worry about breaking it. There we go. Slide it forward. And it, it, has a, it had a little bit of oil. It was enough to where I'm glad I took it off of there. The screws for the pocket clip are on the inside of the scale, so that's kind of nice. I kind of like that clean look where they're not, all that hardware is not prominent. I really like the way that they've milled these, this backspacer in here. I mean, it's one of my pet peeves with knives is exposed blades and tips in my pocket. And if you watched, I don't know, if you watched three of my videos, without a doubt, you've probably heard me kind of balking about that issue. And uh, it's not just two sons, man. But I buy a lot of two sons, so it seems like it's a lot of two sons. It feels like it's a lot of two sons, but... I mean, I probably have 10 to 1 Tucson's, Tucson's over any other manufacturer. Now, I have I have several of many manufacturers. Like, I really, especially right now, I'm really liking me some Kaiser knives. Like, some of the stuff they got coming out right now is just, whew, wonderful. But... You know, when you're buying as many Tucson's as I buy, any relevant flaws are going to be multiplied be just from the percentages of how many knives I'm looking at. But I find those safety flaws with a lot of knives, and it's just kind of 
It's like, what are they thinking, man? I mean, unless you're going to buy it and just put it in a safe, put it in a, a collection. Oh, speaking of that, a while back, I was in some, one of the Facebook sites that I follow, Knife Collectors or something, I don't know what it was, but there was a, somebody had a knife collection in there in a glass case that, I mean, it might have been the most stunning thing I've ever seen, the way that all the knives were in there and displayed, it was just, man, it was wonderful. It's one of those things where I'd, I'd love to meet that dude and go hang out at his pad for a minute because uh, I'm pretty sure the way that it was meticulous, um, there's probably some really good conversations. My guess is that guy could probably tell you every little nuance of every little knife. And that kind of stuff interests me. I don't really remember stuff like that myself. I'm not a statistician man or, you know, I don't keep track of stuff like that. Don't really pay attention to it either. But if somebody's going to tell me interesting stuff about their knife collection, man, I'm going to listen. So I've got a captured pin, but I don't see where it's captured anywhere. I don't think it is. I think it freewheels, man. Yep. Which is fine. It's going to put me down here on this side where I want to be. Okay. Got internal stop pins. I like that. Pretty nice. I can't tell, but I'm not sure that I wiped this blade off. So I'm going to do it again. All right. Let's keep the train moving, man. I think I'll, I'll wet that detent bowl real quick too. Just a little bit there. I think we're ready. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. Locked up tight. Yeah, that didn't improve at all. It's got quite the detent, too, I can tell you that. All right, get rid of these tools, all this stuff. Let's do a quick wipe down. Reveal that gorgeous SV90 steel. There we go. Tucson TS-139 in S90V. So the action, I mean, it's getting better. Maybe, maybe it's a B. I mean, for a front flipper like that, maybe it's a B plus. Let me uh let me check something. Yeah, so the blade's freewheeling. It's just a detent. 
the detent's pretty stiff on it. Could I lighten up the detent a little bit? Maybe, but go too far and then that front flipper won't work at all. Um, what about access to this lock bar? So there's no chamfer, there's no lowering, there's no nothing. There's just digging in here and getting a hold of that. Now it's pretty easy to do to get in there and get it, but it's stiff. So that takes a little fair amount of pressure. And because there's no, there's no scalloping, there's no nothing, you know, that, you know, you're opening this knife. It's not effortless. Um, ergonomics. So, I mean, this jimping here, and then this jimping here is the saving grace of this knife as far as ergonomics because it's it's aggressive enough that it literally locks in on both sides, the top and the bottom. And then the shape of this allows this to tuck into the palm. See that shape of that right there? It... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's by design, but man, it sure works to tuck that into the palm and then everything's locked in. So oddly enough, here's another knife without a finger guard that, I mean, I feel really locked into. So, I mean, without any kind of finger guard whatsoever, you've got not very confident, confident, and very confident. We're definitely below confident. But we're not down here at not very. I mean, there's enough of a grip here. And, of course, it's pointy. It's needle sharp. Needle sharp. That is super pointy. That, I mean, that's going to lend itself to penetration. So, I mean, I'm going to say we're up towards confident, but we're definitely on the low side. Um, let's check the pocket clip. So thick material, it always comes down to mostly can it get over the front, and it did. Instantly went right over the front, and then it ran. Now, I think by design, this thing tends to ride crooked. Maybe not. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, it's, it's this way, but I mean, even on these these thick material, this thing rides. Now it's got, I mean, three quarters of an inch sticking up, so it's not a deep carry clip, um, but it functions on that thick material for sure. And it definitely functions on the jean material. It's got plenty of grip. And then this back right front corner, you know, it runs good there as well. Yeah, so the clip's good. Let's check it for safety. So that's, I mean, Come on, I dig it, man. There's no way to contact the blade there. And I mean, I'm touching that tip there. So let me, oh, 100%, man. If you came down, if this was in your pocket and you came down on that spot right there, you, you're catching that tip. So that's a fail. I mean, not kinda, that needle sharp tip, it's boom, it's right there. And keep in mind, like, like I'm, I'm looking for it. So I'm not trying to jam my finger on that because I, you know, I don't want to be bled. But if you were reaching in your pocket nonchalantly, it's like, oh, hey, you know what? I've, I've got a dollar in my back pocket. Let me get it for you. And you went bam and you reached in there with, you know, nonchalantly. I mean, yeah, this one, this one is right there. It's going to get you. So the pocket clips are pass, the backspace are pass, but this tip is a fail. Yep. Um, I wonder if it's sharp. Uh, piece of paper. All right, I guess we're getting new paper. Almost threw this little, threw it, almost threw it completely. A little phone book. All right, come on. Oh, it's got a little burr. Let's get rid of that. Okay, a couple, two, three passes. That's all I did. One, two, yeah. So 
So a couple two three passes and then a lightweight out. I do see some flex here. So I'm thinking I, I took something off of here. Let's see. We'll check it. I don't know. What do y'all think? Does it help to get that burr off of there? This thing's stupid, wicked sharp, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's 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 all get out pointy, man. I just wish it wasn't pointing towards my fingers in my pocket. But you know, you know what they say about wishing, right? So, um, price and availability. What's going on with this thing? So the only place that I know that this is available right now is a live auction on eBay. Buying it from uh, DWIN99, who is the Tucson seller. Um, and I only see one at a time going. I've been watching these for a while. And price-wise, they're going anywhere from $100 to $150. But they're right, I mean, most of these are right around 100 bucks, and that's that's where I got this one right around a hundred bucks. So I, I mean, I see a bunch of them there, but man, I've seen them go for quite a bit more. So I think what happens is, you know, if you just get on one and you're watching the auction, if somebody really wants it, they're willing to pay for it. Is it worth it? I mean, it's titanium, carbon fiber inserts, uh, S90 V steel. I, I mean, it's a quality piece. No question about that. And you can lock in. Nice pocket clip. It'll ride nice in the pocket. I mean, is it worth 130, 140 bucks? Well, I can tell you there's a whole lot of D2 knives that are in that range and more. So, I mean, and G10. It's amazing how many high end knives I see now. Expensive knives. Like two hundred dollar knives with G10 on them, and here's carbon fiber and titanium and S90V. So, I mean, if you had to get 130, 140 bucks to to get one, would it be worth it? I think it would. I think it would. It's a great. It's a great knife. Lightweight, comfortable. Anyways, there you go. I appreciate you watching.